Hey, Dad, can you lend me a buck, please? Yeah, sure. Why? Because I want to donate to Daily Tech News Show. What? But how are you going to do that? I'm going to head over to patreon.com slash acedetect, and if you like the show, then you can donate too. This is the Daily Tech News Show for Monday, December 29th, 2014. I'm Tom Merritt, and uh, we are going to have a special show. Don't call it a clip show because you asked for it. This is going to be better than any shades of gray from the next generation that you could ever find. We're going to take a look back at the best of year one of the Daily Tech News Show. I can't believe it's been a year. And what better way to begin than back in January on the day Molly Wood opened the floodgates and let the internet in. Who's that lady? Oh, that I dude. don't know. Oh, it's people joining because I tweeted. Oh, because... Uh oh did I tell them, like, did I, I tweet them gave to them our the, actual uh... hangout? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. So maybe I should delete that link, that tweet yeah, then? Yeah, I guess, I think so. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I literally invited you all to our Don't hangout. take it personally. Don't take it personally, but Tom's going to kick you out right now. <laughs> Man, Twitter is powerful. Okay, so now where do I send them? That was my fault. I think I told you to do that, and it you was did, wrong. You did. You totally did do that. You did. This is going to happen. The Daily Tech News Show launched on January 2nd, 2014. Our first guest was Tim Stevens. I, I don't know if I'd even consider it beta or alpha or whatever, uh, but that, that's what we're going on. So, Tim, you ready? I'm very ready, and I'm very honored to be here for your first uh, experiment, alpha, beta, omega, whatever it is. Not omega. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to experiment <laughs> on you. Anytime. Wide <laughs> open. I did sign the release form, too, so we're good to go. We launched on crowdfunding site Patreon and reached our first goal by the end of January. Then we got down to business. <laughs> uh, Lamar is at CES. How are mm -hmm. your feet, Lamar? They are healing. I actually I was staying at a really nice hotel, so I was I was able to get into jacuzzi this morning and and relax because I woke up and my legs were stiff. And that, that's just from uh, the CES unveiled. Just walking from hotel to hotel just to get to the press stuff yesterday, my feet were dead. So I'm like, I'm here all week. I don't know how they're going to survive. Any of those headlines catch your eye there, Scott? Well, as much as I was impressed with your enunciation of all of the P's in the EU getting after <laughs> Google, yeah. that really impressed me. My gosh, it was way too many P's for any man to read. And you, you pulled that off nicely. But the well, black phone you. story is probably the most interesting to me, given the, uh, the focus on security. It's not kind of what I expected from that. And uh, it seems like there's an interesting market to be tapped there, maybe. Remember, your, your, your trucking systems, your train systems, your, your freight delivery systems are common carriers, right? And, and no one says, oh, the, you know, the package delivery system in the U.S. is socialism. There's a way <laughs> to create a common carrier system that is perfectly, legitimately open market. But nobody wants to talk about that because the incumbents know that if they do common carrier, they'd have to open their lines and it might squeeze their profit margins. And it wouldn't mean they wouldn't make profit, but they want to maximize profit. That's what companies do. And what I don't like is when they try to get legislation or regulation to tilt the playing field in their advantage and it hurts the consumers. That's what you're seeing playing out here right now is Tom Wheeler honestly trying to figure out how to create some kind of consumer-friendly regulation, given the pressures he's under, not to actually do the reasonable thing, which is common carrier. That's why you have these strange, obscure, like, oh, well, we'll say it's commercially reasonable, but we'll put the bar high, and we'll have these 15 different exceptions that we'll look at. There's a simple way to get around all that, but that's a symptom of the fact that you're trying to avoid the simple solution here. Len Peralta and Darren Kitchen joined us every Friday. Hi, everybody. I'm having spaghetti tonight. Mm -hmm. Can I just say I was against mass surveillance before being against mass surveillance was cool? <laughs> Len created original DTNS artwork, and Darren brought the drone rants, hack explainers, and, well... <laughs> who is wearing his Oculus Rift and only speaking in music. Oh, I, gonna... I feel so, I, I honestly feel like I should have tried harder. Like maybe I should have built a robot or something to yep. replace me on the air. Frankly, I agree. I, I feel underdressed. We traveled to South by Southwest and hung out in the rain with the DTNS faithful. And in March, we reached our second Patreon goal, $10,000 a month. And a big goal deserved a big thank you. Welcome uh, to the thank apocalypse. <laughs> Are you ready? 
Jenny I'm Jason. ready. Here we go. I'm ready. Jacob, all the way from the island. Thanks, man. Sean Campo, you have my heart. Tim Powell, so many Tims, all the Tims. Thank you, Tims. Garen Wells, well's done, friend. James Carroll of the Bells, 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 Bells. <laughs> Thank you, James. Mark Kitchens, what's cooking, man? Mike Walsh, would never Walsh on support for us. Sir Ryan Bemrose, a knight of the realm. Jay Caceres, you deserve our thank us. And Vince Dinkulescu, I believe you have one of the best names yet. Mm -hmm. Except for Torsten Kothke, which Rothke. And this is it. Oh, my this God. This is the last bit. <laughs> Andrew Wyatt, why not it? Thank you. Justin Robert Young. Woo! Pretend he's not here. Bodan Tomanek. Bo on down and get our thanks. John Chabowski, the big Chabowski, the dude. And Brian Rushwood. The very first. Belly claps for Woo everybody. Thank, Thank you, all. Patriots. We traveled to Nerdtacular on the 4th of July. Hey, Nerdtacular, how's it going? And Dragon Con on Labor Day. And paid homage to the Podfather. Joining me today, the Podfather, co-host of No Agenda Show, Mr. Adam Curry. I am honored to have you along, sir. I'm here in this track. It needs cowbell, Tom. It needs cowbell. That's <laughs> Thank you for needs, the cowbell. Baby. And congratulations to you, uh, Tom, because you've really done uh, something that I think uh, John Dvorak and I uh, are, are very proud of, is we have built uh, our own show, now in its seventh year, the No Agenda Show. We've built that uh, purely with support from the listeners, and we, we, we've kind of loosely coined this the value for value model. Really, it came out of the audience calling it that because... Um, we would say, hey, you know, did you go to the movies? You know, what did it cost you for two tickets, popcorn, a drink, and you know, 40, 50 bucks? Okay, we just entertained you for two and a half hours. Was it worth anything to you? If not, don't say anything. If you like it, do. And you've really taken that, and, uh, uh, and I think you also proved that it, it can be done. You know, and 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 you saw your way away from I think the network model and the shows you've been doing have been outstanding also the stuff you know Brushwood does I mean, I'm really proud of of a whole bunch of people who are doing these things and proving that it can be done with with the people who care about what we're doing the audience yeah no I, I th thank you I appreciate that uh, and it, I definitely took inspiration from no agenda show in that manner that that value for value manner as I, I said over and over on the show mm -hmm. uh, and I'm I'm happy it's worked out Oh, come here, give crossed. me a kiss, Tom. Aww. <laughs> Thank you for bringing the beard, by the way. Oh, I, 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 I Tom's do honor. If, if, we're, if we're going to uh, be without Tom, we're going to go double beard. Beards were big on DTNS in 2014. Part of a bigger <laughs> trend. What? Justin's, Justin's here. <laughs> ah. Well, hello, Justin Robert Young. You He's finally made American it. American flag. How did you even do that? Oh, like America herself. I have arrived from the airport. Oh, my beard Fantastic, was pretty close man. to yours, actually. You actually got it's here about six point. minutes earlier than I than I thought you would. Uh, yes, no, there was some uh, hilariously dangerous driving <laughs> from other people, and we brought you the tech news in multiple languages. Alexa becomes Lexa A, Cortana becomes Ortana K, and Hey Siri becomes Hey Hey Siri Say. Ante uye Christian K Antro K. It a guy that a gink that a guy would get you should a good you could a cruise uh should a get a bit of girl riddigish should a get bigger bit of girl riddigish it gets bit again it a gay what a guy good a goal that sounds not like pig latin but pig urdu it's gibberish <laughs> it's totally gibberish what are you doing no it's literally gibberish. you never spoke gibberish as a kid nope. uh, i'm a little my gibberish is a little rusty patrick beja became an honorary american I'm putting on my uh, cowboy hat because in okay. the chat room, Lou declared me an honorary American. That's very nice so of you, Lou. So that's very kind of you. Thank yeah. you. So I'm I'm proving that I am by using my by putting on my cowboy hat. And then, thanks to you, we made him family. 
Uh, I think you should just stick around as a regular contributor because now you're just going to be a podcaster. Yeah, are, are you are you asking me to to be on the show on a regular basis? Do you need me to get down on one knee? No, please don't. Uh, this is embarrassing. Uh, not not in front of all those people, Tom. I told you I didn't. Wow, I, this I is not how I imagined that would go. <laughs> Uh, no, yes, actually, Tom, I would be very happy to be a regular contributor on the show. So thank you, Patrick. And I really appreciate it. I, you know, I, we joke around, but uh, it's really something that means a lot to me. I, I grew up as a podcaster um, listening to, to you, you know, on, on Buzz Out Loud with uh, Molly and Veronica and, and Jason and all of that. And I feel a little bit like I remember watching uh, Dignation where Alex Albrecht would say, would tell uh, Kevin Rose, you know, I used to watch you on on TV and now I'm here and and this is a little bit like that for me you're my podcasting hero and I couldn't be more honored or happier uh, to be invited to join the show so thank you so much to you and Jenny and we didn't stop there joining me today in his first official appearance as an official contributor to the official daily tech news show the official Justin Robert Young hello friends it's good to be with you Hey, man, it's good to have you here. Uh, Justin, of course, host of Night Attack, Weird Things podcast, and now weekly-ish contributor to the Daily Tech News Show. And uh, we're very happy to have you along. We're going to be talking about a little bit of Spotify Uber integration in a bit. Are you ready? Uh, I think there could be no better topic than the the hand-wringing over the <laughs> tremendous revolution in citizen cab companies and our uh, immediate nitpicking on how good or how bad it is. I took my arthritis medication. I'm ready to wring some hands. We had fun on Halloween. I'm just a simple country doctor today. <laughs> Where'd Darren go? Why? He's right here. Oh, there he is. <laughs> yes. like, what the what? The what? It's just part of my... Uh, Jenny is not a red shirt. She is like Scotty or Ahura red shirt. So don't, you don't yes. have to worry about her. So it'll be fine. We're not sending her on an away mission anyway. So. Except if it's to the donut store. And I'm sure I'll be just fine. We might need that, actually. Uh, Darren's a, a warehouse worker because he's in a warehouse. And I have power tools. So nice. stand back. Actually, and Len, if you could just hold your Star-Lord to your face... Yeah, yeah oh, there. Man. Now we get it. That is the work of art. That's amazing. All right, shall we uh, start this show? Shall we start here? But that old net neutrality had us in its spell. How are you feeling about the way this debate is going? I mean, I you know, I think it's funny because it, it is easy in some ways to say, look, this is exactly the same debate that it's been for the 10 years that we've been talking about it, which is can you really trust the companies with that stand to make all of the money and that stand that have arguably monopolies in some areas of this country and that have not always been good actors when it comes to their stewardship of this increasingly invaluable resource that being the internet so i think from that perspective the argument really hasn't changed that much but now it's become much more complicated because the conversation is so much about access to uh, over-the-top video to TV, right, to Netflix, to CBS services, to streaming video, to Hulu. And then it's been further confused by all, all these conversations about interchanges and, you know, peering connections and Netflix paying Comcast for guaranteed service. So it's gotten more confused and weirdly more political than ever, but at the end of the day, I think it still comes down to the simple question of having a really good broadband in infrastructure and whether we can trust these guys to build it without all of their sort of like commercial desires getting in the way. And let me tell you folks, as soon as you start to feel that any of these arguments are against your side, you've stopped thinking productively. This is not a one side or another issue. Uh, unless you're a, a large company trying to protect your, your, your current profit margins. This is not a Republican issue. It's not a Democratic issue. It is an internet issue. It's, it's about internet management. So try your hardest, no matter what side you normally are on, not to get caught up. Thank goodness we had Len Peralta drawing the bandwidth fairy. The and, bandwidth fairy! <laughs> and that's the bandwidth fairy, of course, this week. Of course, is Molly. I recognize that bandwidth fairy, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and she's going to she's going to break the internet in a good way. And you get bandwidth, and you get bandwidth, and you get bandwidth. Let's break the internet, my pretties. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. <laughs> 
Special thanks to every one of my co-hosts who took time out of their day to join us. My daughter's a huge Taylor Swift fan. I've been to three concerts. I'm a oh, shy tech guy. What are you doing? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about being on the radio and the video and everything. Is this a podcast? There's probably going to be over 9,000 words we speak. Look, if you want lots of words in your show, you're in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Daily Tech News Show, now with more words. <laughs> the most words on the internet. And I, I don't want to be too blankety with what I'm about to say, but so far nobody is giving me a compelling reason to wear a watch again, which I stopped doing about 10 years ago. I love wearing watches. I wear a watch like almost every single day. I, like If I want to go out running and I want to use my watch as my accelerometer, my pedometer, my uh, you know, yeah. being able to track all my fitness stuff, do I need to have the phone on me as well for that yes, to work? Yes, you absolutely do because they said that it's going to use the, the GPS and accelerometer from the phone, so mm -hmm. it's using the, uh, the new M8 coprocessor in that. Although they implied in the video, Lamar, mm -hmm. that you could see set the wake word to be whatever you want. He said, we set our wake word to be Alexa. So I want to set mine to Xbox. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a conflict of interest in your living room? <laughs> Just and, then, okay, and then change it to OK Google after that. <laughs> exactly. This show would not be possible without your support. And we'll keep bringing you the best of the technology news as long as you want us to. And I cannot possibly Thank you enough for making this happen. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed a look back at year one, and here's to year two. We'll be back uh, tomorrow with our predictions results show. I, as Akhtar and I, are going to look at what we predicted for 2014 back in 2013 and see how well we did. Join us then. This podcast is part of the Frogcast Studios Network. For more information about this and other shows, visit frogkids.com. Audio program so good, it's like you're there. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>